Hey everyone, it's Vicki Kelty, and today I'm here with Trey, a fellow English, English, English teacher. Mistakes are okay, Vicki. I was just going to say, I was like, that was unintentional. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is perfect. I know what you mean. <laughs> this is a great lead in because, well, I'm not going to spill the beans yet. So I'm excited that we're here today with Trey, who I actually met on Twitter. And you can meet them too if you go to at Opoven. Is that right? Yeah. Opoven a- one. I don't know how you say it. I made not it up. two. One. <laughs> well, then you get to decide how we say it. I think it's Apoven. A P O V E N. App oven. An oven for apps. <laughs> but, but with just one P, don't get confused. So the reason that we met is because the Trey is always sharing these idioms and vocabulary and that also link to the YouTube channel that Trey has, which uh, is our second connection. We're connected all over. Although this is the first time that we're getting to meet in... <laughs> Well, not in person, in, in, in video format, face to face, virtually. Yes. yes. There you go. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So today we're going to share what I was hinting at accidentally that we're going to share language mistakes. So I gave a lovely lead in with a couple that you may or may not have noticed, but yeah, language stories. Um, before we go into that, do you have anything that you want people to know before we start? Um, oh gosh, you know, I can tell us your life story about myself, but <laughs> I've been teaching for I'm getting up to 20 years. I'm not sure on the exact math, but let's just say about 20 years. And math I've is been... not our subject. No, so no, no. Fine. We're not math teachers. Just ask my students. I get their grades correct with the help of a calculator, <laughs> but ask me to group them when there's... <laughs> yeah. That's Hard what's good about Zoom is like, do, can you shuffle the people and do it yourself? Because mm-hmm. Vicky... Yeah. So yeah, I've been in Seoul, South Korea teaching since 2010 what is that 14 years now um so I love teaching uh yeah I'm passionate about teaching and language and just you know self-betterment type things um yeah so well I think that we will definitely be touching on that with some of the things we mentioned today um let's jump into our stories so do you have a memorable mistake story that you want to share either um, one that you had while learning a language yourself or one that you had while teaching I do Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is a mistake I made speaking Korean so Koreans uh, don't usually actually make small talk with people they don't know, except for taxi drivers. So the the speaking experience well, I get interesting. is with, I've learned a lot of vocabulary from taxi drivers. So about, I don't know, two months ago, maybe I was in a taxi um, and there he was just playing this really great music. Like I loved the music. Now I cannot remember what that music was, but I do remember my mistake. That's what I was going to ask. I'm like, oh, what song was it? I don't it? know. Like, it could have been music from the seventies, but I don't think, I really don't remember, but I remember the mistake and I remember what I said and what I should have said. And so anyway, I wanted to tell him that I liked his music. Now I know that my grammar is not so great in Korean, but so I said, um, in Korean. And he was kind of confused because what I said was, I like food. <laughs> so he's like, he actually, that's a nice way to start a conversation. Know, like, <laughs> <laughs> so he figured it out. Like, that's the great thing about, you know, speaking is 
the context give I don't know if I said music in English. I don't know how he figured it out, but I was impressed that he figured it out and he gave me the correct word. And he's like, umak. I'm like, umak, yes, umak. I have I learned both of these words. Sorry, when I get excited, I speak faster and I should be aware of our listeners who maybe aren't getting my fast speech. Okay. This Slow is a down. very normal thing. Slow and down. the number of times my students are like, uh, Vicky, like tone it down. I'm like, I'm just so excited. Yeah. yeah. Excitement and so, faster speech, very normal. Yeah. And the, I do the hand practice. movements. Good listening practice. <laughs> yeah, there so, you go. I so yeah, he gave me, he was like, oh, umak. So I learned the word for food. I got a little visual for everybody if I can get it without the oh, glare. Yeah. Okay. So you can see that they look really similar. So yeah. umchik is food. Umak is music. Now in English, they're super different. But in Korean, the first, I can't figure out where, oh yeah, this is exactly the same. And there's only two little differences in letters. So yeah. because I On hadn't the really used the them. Side. Yeah. Because I hadn't used them, like what came out was umchik. Like, but he figured it out. And the wonderful thing is, and why I love this, is because I'm never going to forget now the difference between umchik and umak. I know music is umak now, like because I had an exchange and an interaction. So that's my memorable mistake. There are others, but yeah, I like that one. That's that's so funny because my memorable, memorable yeah. mistake is, um, it, it's so similar in, mm. in many ways. So I was, I remember I was in Toledo mm -hmm. with my roommate. We were walking up to the old part, headed up the hill. Like I remember it, like it was yesterday. And I was telling her that my hair that I needed a shampoo that was specific for greasy hair. Uh -huh. And I was thinking, I was like, I was thinking of the word for fat. And I was like, no, not fat hair. And I was thinking of the word for grease. And I was like, oh, maybe if I add this ending to it, it will change it to mm -hmm. make it greasy. And what I ended up saying, cause I was like, okay, I've got the word Brasa. And so uh -huh. maybe if I add like Iosa to the end, it will make it what I want. Graciosa. So I was like, <laughs> Graciosa, which ended up making my hair funny instead of greasy. <laughs> and, and I was like, yeah, I've got this, you know, funny hair. <laughs> so, you know, it's comedic, <laughs> which, you know, it isn't actually that inaccurate because it does do quite funny things, but that wasn't what I intended to say. And so she gave me a look similar to the text. Uh -huh. like, mm, is this really what you want? And I was like, you know, and so we were explaining it further and she was like, oh, this is what you actually wanted to say. And it, it turns out that it's, it's like the same word. So mm. I can say pelo grasso or cabello grasso. And then it's funny that the word cabello is, is like horse they use for hair. Yeah. Right. It's so I mixed similar that up to with horse. Spanish. Yeah. They, yes. Caballo, cabello, cabello. And then like, there's the cabal. false friends, <laughs> false friends of pregnant and embarrassed. Yes. Right. Yes. Like, em I've, I never made that mistake, but I, I invent my own mistakes. I don't need to, to make the typical no. ones. And yeah, but so I always remember now that, um, that explanation for greasy hair so that, and, and look, look how nice my hair is today. It's See? beautiful. No, it's not greasy at all. I, I now and have now my I'm gonna greasy hair shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, I mean, and this was, let's see. Um, it would have been before 2013. So over 11, <laughs> what's with yeah. all the math today? Over 11 years ago that I had this conversation and it, it sticks. It like sticks me. when yeah. you make a mistake and you become aware of it and you, somebody feeds you the correct thing. I mean, yeah. there's a time and a place for that, but in a not, you know, yes. it sticks. You remember it. 
Yeah. For me, it was really nice that that situation happened just between me and my roommate. So like mm -hmm. we had, um, we had a, a relationship that we were quite close. And so she could tell me that. And I yeah. didn't feel like I was being critiqued or it was, it was just a funny moment that yeah. I, did, I didn't think anything. I didn't give any extra meaning to my mistake. Like, Oh, I yeah. can't speak now. I, I should never say anything else in Spanish because no, I was like, Oh, okay, cool. Well, now I know for next time. Yeah. It's so nice when that happens. For mm -hmm. sure. And what, um, why do you think that mistakes are so important for us to make as we go about learning languages? I mean, we, I, can you guys guess the answer? Like, I feel like it's, we know, right. It's a learning opportunity. They're learning yeah. opportunities. Um, I don't know if there's another answer besides that. Let's see. Yeah. We've, we basically painted yeah. the picture. I mean, and I think when it comes to developing any skill, mistakes are a part of that. If you don't practice, whether it's a musical instrument or, you know, an online game or a sport, you, for some reason, were able to accept those mistakes as part of the learning process. But when it comes yeah. to language and communication, people really, some people really struggle with it's the same thing. Like you must practice so true. in order to improve, it, you know, and you need to speak using just, just do it, throw it out there because otherwise you're, you get, you only go so far if you're not using yeah. what you're learning. You can read about the piano, how to play it all your life. Mm -hmm. Can you play it without putting your fingers on the keyboards? Keyboard, not well, like all the keyboards. Are <laughs> Depends how many pianos you're playing. Maybe you have the organ one, with the two one. keyboards. Hey, okay. but that's, I think that what your example with a taxi ride really showed, I mean, this is what I got from it is that if you hadn't tried that day to say the word music, mm -hmm. then either you never would have learned the word music because you never yeah. shared it, or you may have tried it in a different situation that it wasn't, um, that it wasn't corrected. And then maybe <laughs> you continue then telling everybody about food all the fossilized, time. Fossilized, right. And get stuck. <laughs> yes. And then it became, then it would become this it's hard to change, food. really hard to change. Yeah. Yeah. Those dinosaur <laughs> Those dinosaur Those errors. Dinosaur mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. They. How do you think that we overcome that fear? Because as you mentioned with, we, we do need to connect it more with just normal that when you want to learn piano, you have to touch the keys in order to learn it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. with learning a language, it's no different. But as you said, like for some reason, a lot of times there can be a block for people. I know I've had one that mm -hmm. you're just like, Oh, but I don't want to say this because if I say it wrong, then maybe people are going to laugh at me or, or they aren't going to understand me or <laughs> even I'm even like wringing my yeah. hands when I say this. <laughs> And well, and I think we have to be able to laugh at ourselves. We we need you have to grow a little bit thicker skin and be able to laugh at yourself. Sometimes you know because you know it's life's hard, but we all we're human. We all make mistakes. But language is funny. <laughs> language is it's fun. Like words, it is it's fun. so it's fun. Often when people do laugh, it's not they're not laughing at you. It's just like oh, isn't that funny that this word. You know, it's so similar, it's so similar, to, this similar to this word. Like, oh, yeah, it's, it's fun. Um, but I think it really yeah. comes down to mindset and and the way we're looking at mistakes. Unfortunately, like I know a lot of my students, their earlier education really, like, literally, they've told me that they've had teachers who have told them, "Do not speak English until your grammar is perfect. You don't speak until it's perfect." 
and like, and they get criticized for making mistakes, but then they come to my class and I'm like, make, make mistakes. If you make a mistake, you're getting, you're getting a, a point in this game that we're yeah, playing. You get extras. Like, it doesn't matter because the more mistakes you make, actually this, I want to reference a book that I read. Well, or, yeah, I read recently by, um, I think it's Adam, yeah, Adam Grant, Hidden Potential, The Science of Achieving Greater Things. So he actually talks about polyglots. I'm saying that word right, right? I meant to double check it. Yeah, polyglot. Yeah, polyglot. Well, that's how I say it. Any languages, yeah. Any polyglot so, can come and correct us if we're, yeah. we are happy to be corrected if you are clear <laughs> yes, on that Yes, I have yet. no problem being corrected. I love, actually just today, one of my students <laughs> corrected me because we did this interviews with a twist. And I said, what do you call the person who is asking the questions in an interview? And so they said, interviewer and like okay what do you call the person who answers the questions and they anyway interviewee so I wrote I wrote both those words on the board but I put interviewer for both of them I didn't change I put so one kid I love him so much he was like professor you I'm like oh thank you yeah no this should be an e like please correct me <laughs> please I write the wrong yeah, dates on meanings. Yeah, that the rest of the class by correcting you. Yeah. Because they, they, somebody who might have missed something that was being said, they were like, oh, it's the same thing, interviewer, interviewer. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. no. It's so and it's important so to correct me. Yeah, I love it. it makes me happy. I like that. Just, um, just correct, Trey. <laughs> keep correcting me. You'll be using English. I'm good. English, I'm so. good. <laughs> in English. Oh, no. There you go. So, Bonus points for sure. Oh, yeah. In English. they yeah, I've designed my classroom as a game now, actually, to try and get, that's Love another it. story. Um, <laughs> if anybody knows Vicky and yes, her I know games, like then I'm like, I'm yeah. sorry, what? You turned it into a game? Mm. Yeah, maybe we will talk more about we can this talk later. about when I have you on my channel. Oh. Yeah. All right. I'm so in. Benny Lewis, have you heard of Benny Lewis? He's like yeah. an Irish. Yeah. So He's quoted in this book by um, Adam Grant, and he he says he sets a goal to make 200 mistakes a day when he is learning a new language. And that I know he knows it. Might be a bit more languages. than I know I it's a lot. Before, but... right? it's, I agree, <laughs> I, but he I'll he be, measures. Say what, what amount would you set, Trey, for yourself? I know, not 200. <laughs> I mean, for my students, even I mean, like a five. <laughs> Let's do five. There you go. five I think good. five is a is a reasonable number for it. I'm not yeah. saying that that Benny's not average, but how many languages did you say that he's at learned? least eight? So at least yeah, eight, the last time I checked. But <laughs> since anyway. we're just focusing on one, we can you know, if you did the math, it works out to five errors. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Two hundred is too many. But the point is, he measures progress by how many mistakes he makes. So so the value in it, I mean you making a mistake, noticing the mistake yeah. yourself, even like there's so much value in that. Um, and then he says, the more mistakes you make, the faster you'll improve and the less they will bother you. So the best cure to feeling uncomfortable about making mistakes is to make more mistakes. So just getting comfortable being uncomfortable and seeing that you survive the mistake. It's okay. Yeah. That is, I love that line that you survived the mistake because mm -hmm. really what's going to happen? Like, I, I know people often say this, like when you don't want to do something, like what's the worst that can happen and, and you can go yeah. through and you can invent these really worst case scenarios, but in the end, like what's the worst that can happen? Somebody may laugh at you or you feel like you're being laughed at. Somebody mm -hmm. can correct you. Somebody can say, um, that, well, why, like somebody can make a comment about it, like go through and think about for you, what would be the worst that could happen? Yeah, examine the fear. What is the fear about? And really the like nine times out of 10, probably those aren't the things that are going to happen. Yeah. And I think when it comes to mistakes, English is a very forgiving language. And especially when you're mm -hmm. speaking, writing is a different that's a, a different beast, but when we're you're focusing speaking, on speaking, <laughs> when you're speaking, you're negotiating meaning. And so 
Yeah. It's okay to stop and clarify, wait, wait, did it, is this what you meant? Or did you mean this? I don't understand. It's okay. Yeah. Like we say all that. And, and English speakers actually can understand English, broken English, English with incorrect grammar really well. Like it's not a hindrance to There's so much that you can get from just the context. Yeah. Of other yep. things that one faux pas is not going to, yeah. is not necessarily going to, yeah. to throw everything else off. I think the totally. mistakes to worry about have nothing to do with grammar, have nothing to do with vocabulary. They have more to do with culture, tone, mm. and, yeah. um, and the biggest mistake is being afraid of making mistakes and cutting yourself off from a communication and, yes. and appearing like you're not interested and you don't care. And you, you, you miss out on sharing your ideas and opinions and making connections. And that's the biggest mistake is we're not 100%. hearing your voice and we want to like, you know, yeah. I can't tell you the number of conversations that I didn't have in Spanish mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I, I had it in my head. I thought of what I could say and I was like, well, I'm just not going to say it. And those people probably think, oh, Vicky's such a quiet person. She's <laughs> no, I'm not, but nope. you didn't get to know that because <laughs> I didn't let you yeah. into Vicky because, and so yeah. you, I missed out on those connections because I was like, oh, well, uh, I'll just, I'll just be quiet for this one. I'll, I'll say it next time or I'll go home and, and review and make sure that that was all correct. And then in the next conversation, I'll give it mm -hmm. a try, but Imagine yeah, with if all I those had... missed opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the beauty of language is we can use it for a tool as a tool to, yeah. you know, and with patience and love and kindness, any misunderstandings can be cleared up. And if somebody is the worst that happens, somebody is offended or like, again, love and kindness and understanding. It's not your problem if they're going to, you know, yeah, that's totally, it's, <laughs> you, it's you hard to, to, to like be okay safe to talk to. <laughs> yes. It's, it's hard to be okay with people who, who do respond in that way. And that is, and it's also hard to, to get the fact that that's out of our control. Right. So we have to, I really think that the majority of people are not like that. And the majority, yeah, of I agree. Absolutely. Want like, I to understand because they want to like communicate that. with you. Yeah. 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 Like when we started and I was making those mistakes, Trey's first response was not like, Vicky is silly because she can't figure these things out. And now we can't converse, or I have no and, idea where she's going with this. And mistakes, this just popped into my head. Honestly, mistakes are endearing. Mistakes show our vulnerability and we connect. Yeah. I mean, we're all vulnerable and we're all human. And, yeah. and I mean, honestly, I love people more when they make mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, now that you said that, that's so true. <laughs> you feel it's closer so because true. you're like, oh, yeah. You do. I, yeah you're like, you're oh, you made a mistake. So did I. Yay. Yeah. And you yeah. were okay with it. And if you're okay with it, then I can be okay with that discomfort. Or like, mm -hmm. I can let myself be vulnerable too, because you were willing to be. Yeah. Oh, that's so profound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, They... I think we've touched on everything. I Do think, you have anything? yeah, I'm looking at my notes and I feel like I, I think, uh, I think that is everything that's without sitting and scouring my notes for another five minutes. Like, did I, did I, did I, did I do everything? I say everything I wanted to say. It's enough. We can do a round two if needed. So, yeah, but I guess to sum up, it comes down to mindset and I mean, motivation too. motivation. Well, it's another topic, but if you really, really want something, it doesn't even have to be, you know, speaking English. There has to be this beginner's mind and this willingness to be uncomfortable before you get good at something. You can't just be good at something. You have to. Yes. I, yeah. There's lots honestly, of videos I, out there about mindset <laughs> and books. <laughs> <laughs> this was your, your first one. Oh. And Oh, say, say it. I, I see a note. I see. I have these post-it note, post notes. Oh, good. This, Tell us. There were, because we talked about how to overcome 
we talked about talking about it. I can't remember what we talked about, but focusing on the other person. This is one way to get past that fear Ooh. is put the focus outside of yourself. Focus on the other person. Give them your undivided attention, your full attention. Stop thinking about yourself. Think about them and what they're trying to communicate. If, like when someone's talking to you and, and sh be curious, show interest in that person. That's how you make the connections. Um, so being open and focused on them, not on, oh no, what am I? Yeah, I think that helps. Yes, like, outward instead of inward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like As an it. only child, it's taken me time to learn that. <laughs> Ah, interesting. Well, as the youngest who it's all about me. <laughs> oh yeah. It's all about me and it's all about you. <laughs> so I can definitely relate to that one, but, yeah. um, yeah, I was just, cause I have a, I actually have a piano right behind mm -hmm. the camera. And I was just thinking about how every time that, cause I, I wouldn't consider myself like, um, very good at the piano. Um, but, but do you enjoy one of the it? Things, <laughs> but I do, I really enjoy it. And I, I think that I could definitely learn a thing, learn a thing or two from our conversation, because sometimes there I'm learning to play, or I've been learning to play for a while, the friends theme song. Oh, and, fun. um, I play it quite slow it's almost like a a ballad and so instead of like dun, 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 it's like dun, 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 dun. and and that's fine I'm I'm fine with that but yeah. the sometimes people come over and they'll be like oh play something for us and I get really nervous <laughs> to play something in front of other people <laughs> and I usually my my thing is to make mistakes. Like I often mess up on a, a key or something, but I will challenge myself to say yes and play for the next person that comes over and asks me to yeah, play a, a nice song because I think that that would be really share. good for me as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not just with the, the language learning, but also to get out of my comfort zone with, with the piano playing as well. So yeah, that's my personal applies personal challenge that you inspired by the story. So thank you. Thank you for all of this, Trey. Well, and you made it all happen by proposing this conversation. So Aww. thank you. Well, yeah. I'm delighted that you said yes. And if anybody has their own personal challenge that they would like to share, maybe you're going to do five mistakes a day or 200, Even one, okay. you know, start do 200, slow. that's fine. Smart but, goal, one mistake, yeah. two mistakes. Do what's comfortable for you. For sure. And um, if you have a mistake story that you'd like to share with us, we would be delighted to read that as well. Drop it in the comments. So before you go, be sure to find out more from Trey over at the YouTube channel eavesdrop english we have somebody eavesdropping right now Yay! i was hoping the cats Hi, would make an appearance perfect <laughs> perfect timing <laughs> he he really just he knows he knows yeah. um it's, it just cracks me up he's like uh it's time vicky it's time <laughs> so the, how do we say food again because that's what he's here for um chick um chick um chick um chick um chick trial um chick Juice. Uh, I don't know how to say, do you want, oh, Dorikeo. Dorikeo. do you want some food? I know I make mistakes yes. with my Korean, but yeah. Don't <laughs> well, they always... actually he can't hear you because I have the headphones in, but <laughs> I'll play the video for him later so that he knows. <laughs> if he speaks um, Korean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can learn it. Mm. They, um, yeah. So over at eavesdrop English, give Trey a, give Trey a follow and you can get, um, idiom tips, vocab tips, more on making mistakes, lots of, ton lots of tons, Good lots tons. of videos, tons of tips, <laughs> everything you could possibly want there. And if you haven't subscribed over here, be sure to do so so that you can catch the next teacher chat 
that I have and that you don't miss any appearances of Gunther. And that's all from us. So thanks Thank so, you much so much for, for having, having me, Vicky. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Hey now.